All right, here's our next lesson in math. Your goal today for this lesson is to learn to solve whole number addition equations. Take what we learned in the previous lesson, now we're going to look at how to balance equations using a new process called inverse operation. Have this written down before moving on. Okay, here is your warm-up. Uh, you're going to tell me whether these four problems are solutions or not solutions. I give you the number to plug in, 16, 4, 68, and 26, and you're going to figure out if when you plug and chug those are solutions or not. Good luck. And here's what I found for 1 through 4, plugging and chugging. I found number 1 is a solution, number 2 is not, and number 3 and 4 were both solutions. Hopefully you got the same results. Surf's up, dude. So some surfers recommend that the length of a beginner surfboard is 14 inches greater than the surfer's height. That's kind of interesting. So if a surfboard is 82 inches tall, you need to be able to figure out how tall the surfer is. Now, the height of the surfer combined with the height of the surfboard is what you need to be able to figure out. And if you take the information you do know with the information you need to find out, you usually can create an equation as such, h plus 14 equals 82. Again, remember, h is a variable, and what that represents is the height of whoever the surfer is, plus 14, which is the 14 inches it needs to be longer on a surfboard. That will determine how tall someone actually is. So how do you actually solve for h? That's what we're going to learn today. We're solving for that variable. That's what we're going to learn today, which is more than just plugging and chugging and guessing. There's actually a method to the madness. So here's the most important thing you're going to need to write down. Okay, This is the definition of inverse operation, or as I like to call it, flippity-flop. Okay, Flippity-flop, or inverse operation. Basically, that's all we're really going to be working on over the next couple of lessons is to know how to use this properly with adding equations, subtracting equations, multiplying equations, and divide, dividing equations. So here, let's first look at this equation, h plus 14 equals 82. Our final result, we want to have a balanced scale like it is at the beginning. So you have to be able to figure out what goes into... With or what goes together with 14 that gives you 82. Well, this is how we're going to use inverse operation to solve both sides. Basically, inverse operations is the opposite operation of what you're dealing with. So you have to look at the operation, the problem, and figure out what's the inverse or what's the opposite that's going to undo the 14 from adding. Well, opposite of adding, you should know, is subtracting. So what we do is we're just going to try to get the variable all alone on one side. So if it says plus 14, the inverse is to subtract 14. And if you subtract 14 from 14, you get 0. But what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So 82 minus 14 is 68. So here we're finding out that the surfer is 68 inches tall. Let's start to break this down and look at some practice problems. All right, so let's get our first example written down with adding equations. We're going to look at this equation, and it says x plus 87 equals 152. So we want to make sure we make a solution here, so we need to find out what x equals. Now remember, I told you the trick to this is inverse operation, so our flippity-flop. So the first thing you have to look at is what operation do we have up here, which is adding. All of them today will be adding. So what's the opposite of adding? That would be subtracting. So really what we're going to do is on the left side, we have 87 plus 87. We need to get that to the other side so it's balanced. We need to get that down to zero. So the way to do that is to subtract. You subtract every last number, which is 87, to both sides. When you subtract 87 from one side, what you do to one side, you've got to do to the other. And if you do that, 152 minus 87 gives you 65. So x equals 65. Now this is the wondrous, most enjoyable thing about all this work. You can tell if 65 is correct right away. 
Don't even have to grade your homework. Don't have to send it to your teacher or anything like that. You can know right away. All you have to do is plug and chug now. Plug 65 back in for X. And if you do that and you see that X plus 87 does equal 152, you know that this is the right solution. So if your final answer doesn't give you an equal uh, solution where both sides are the same, then it's wrong. So that's one way of checking right away. Let's look at another one. Here we'll see it says 72 equals 18 plus y. Well, if you look in front of the 18, you see that there's no negative symbol, so it's a positive number. So in this situation, we're looking at an addition problem as well. So again, our, our, our main objective is to get y all alone on one side. So if we see that we have an adding problem here, you have to use the inverse operation of adding, which is subtracting. So if we take 18 away from one side, what we do to one side, we have to do to the other. We have to move it all the way over. And when you do that, you get 72 minus 18, which is 54. So here we're saying y equals 54. And remember, you can always check your work to see if you're right just by plugging and chugging. So if I plug 54 back in for y, I'll see that 18 plus 54 gives us 72. No guess and check, no trying different numbers. Just simply by subtracting away on both sides, you'll get your variable alone of y. All right, so go ahead and try these six. Remember, this, the operation is going to be the same for every single one. So if I do the first one with you, you could probably do the rest. So here we have, for number one, we have x plus 54 equals 90. Since we see addition, the inverse operation addition is subtraction. And what you do to one side, you got to do to the other. That 54 isn't disappearing completely. It's just being moved. You're transferring it away. So when you do 90 minus 54, you have to make that an 8 and carry that to be a 10. X is still on the one side. It's all alone now. And 10 minus 4 is 6. 8 minus 5 is 3. So x equals 36 is the right answer. And remember, I can check my work right away just by plugging 36 back in for x. 36 plus 54, that equals 90, so that is correct. Go ahead and work on the other five. Come back when you're done. We'll see how you did. So here are the answers I received. You should have got the same answers. And if you don't think my answers are right, all you got to do is plug and chug and see if you get the same equation or solution. So all we had to do for every single one was subtract the number next to the variable and move it to the other side and just leave the variable all alone. That naughty variable needs to be punished and put all by itself on one side of the equation sign. My lesson wouldn't be complete without a... Word problem. Of course, the next couple I may not use a word problem every time. So here we're looking at Johnstown, Cooperstown, and Springfield. They're all located in order in a straight line along the highway. It is 12 miles from Johnstown to Cooperstown and 95 miles all the way from Johnstown to Springfield. We'd have to find the difference or the distance between Cooperstown and Springfield. Well, you know that you could simply just do 95 minus 12 and get an answer of 83. But how? How do you do that? Well, really what we're doing is we're adding the distance of Springfield to Cooperstown. However, you're seeing here that we're dealing with subtraction if you look at it in a simpler term. So 83 miles from Springfield to Cooperstown is what we're looking at. Just because we wrote 95 being the total equals 12, plus whatever that distance was between Cooperstown and Springfield, and that's how we got 83. A lot of you probably are just looking at going, I can tell I can just subtract the two numbers to get the answer. That's really good. That shows that you're understanding numbers and the process if you're able to figure it out that quick. So if you are figuring it out real quick, go ahead and try to figure out this one. It says, Lou, Michael, and Georgette live on Blueberry, uh, Mulberry Street, as shown on the map here. Lou lives 10 blocks from Georgette. Georgette lives four blocks from Michael. How many blocks does Michael live from Lou? Come back when you got the answer.
So you probably got the answer of 6. You may have done it differently than me, but I wrote 10 equaling 4 plus B. So B is that number of blocks we need to figure out. Well, if you subtract 4 away from 10, all that's left is 6. So 6 equals B or 6 blocks. Hopefully you got that right. All right, go ahead and do your box of thought before moving on. you got to tell me whether C plus 4 equals 21 will be less than 21 or greater just by looking at it. The hint here is what's the inverse operation with 4? Are you adding or subtracting? Okay, and describe how you can check your answers in example 2, actually all of them. I want to know how you can check your answers in all of them. What's the little thing I showed you in example 1? And here's your quiz. You have five questions. Four are just simply using inverse operation to solve for x, 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 and x. And then number five, you're going to figure out how tall is Caitlin if you know that Caitlin is two inches taller than Rebecca, or Reba, and Reba is 54 inches. Good luck. And that's the end of our lesson. We'll see you next time.